Over the course of his 50-year career, John Wayne managed to establish himself as one of the leading actors in the movie industry. He was primarily known for his westerns, including the 1969 movie True Grit. It was perhaps one of his most notable projects. It was adapted from a 1968 novel of the same name. Now, John Wayne starred as U.S. Marshal Rooster Cogburn in the film, and he's approached by a young girl named Maddie Ross, played by Kim Darby, to help her catch her father's killer. The country music singer Glenn Campbell starred in the film as a young Texas ranger named LaBeef. In addition to his acting in the film, Glenn Campbell sang the title song, which was nominated for an Academy Award for Best Song. Now, most historians believe that the character of Rooster Cogburn was based on the Deputy U.S. Marshal Heck Thomas. He brought in some of the toughest outlaws out there. The rest of the cast for the movie was rounded out by Robert Duvall, Dennis Hopper, Jeff Corey, and H.W. Gim. The one other character in the film that is actually based loosely on a real-life character is the character of Judge Parker, and it's based on Judge Isaac Parker of the Western District, who held court in Fort Smith, Arkansas, during the period that the movie takes place, and he was known as the Hanging Judge. Now, as filming got started, John Wayne didn't want to wear an eye patch in the movie. He was eventually convinced to do it, and it added such depth to this character. The movie was shot around Ridgeway, Colorado, which is now the home to a cafe that's called True Grit. Now, Rooster actually calls the girl Maddie's revolver a horse pistol, and he called it that because it was the type of revolver that was carried in a holster that was attached to the horn of the saddle of the horse because it was too heavy to be carried on a person's belt. In the novel itself, much of the action actually takes place in snowy conditions. Now, if you're near the town of Ridgeway, Colorado, it might be nice to know that the scene near the end where Rooster Cogburn and Ned Pepper's gang meet in a field and Pepper, played by Robert Duvall, was shot That was filmed in a clearing near the top of Owl Creek Pass outside of Ridgeway, Colorado. The field is just off the road to the left and is very easy to find. Now, John Wayne won the Best Actor Award for his portrayal of Rooster Cogburn, but it's often thought that it was widely seen as a sentimental choice, more for his recognition of his 40-year career. His performance in the movie was dismissed by many of the critics as being over-the-top and hammy. I don't see it that way at all. It's very well written, and he does his typical John Wayne dialogue. I thought he portrayed a great role. Mia Farrow was actually originally cast as the young girl Maddie, and she was really wanting the role. But prior to the filming starting, She was making a film in England with Robert Mitchum, who advised her not to work with the director, Henry Hathaway, because they called him very cantankerous. They actually did their best to get the director changed. The part was then offered to Sandra Locke and Tuesday Weld. Both of them turned it down. John Wayne actually had met Karen Carpenter and liked her at a talent show and thought about her for the part, although the producers decided against it because she had no acting experience. Wayne also lobbied for his daughter to win the part. That didn't happen, and they also thought about Sally Field. But the part eventually went to Kim Darby. Now, Elvis Presley was the original choice for the role that Glenn Campbell had as Mr. LaBeef. But the producers had to turn him down because his agent, Colonel Tom Parker, wanted equal billing with John Wayne. 
Glenn Campbell was then cast for the part instead, and he does a magnificent job. To have no acting experience, I think he did a phenomenal job in this part. Now, John Wayne's action scenes were shot with stunt doubles almost throughout the entire film. He just wasn't able to do the same things he had done when he was younger. Now, there was some turmoil on this set with John Wayne and some of the other actors. John Wayne didn't get along with Robert Duvall during the filming. At one point, he actually threatened to punch the young method actor if he argued with the director again. John Wayne was disappointed by the casting of Kim Darby as Maddie Ross, and the two actually hardly spoke off camera. Now, despite the commercial success of the film, John Wayne was not pleased with the finished film. He greatly disliked Kim Darby's performance. And while he was promoting the film for its U.S. release in June of 1969, he told interviewers that he had starred in much better films, citing the movie Stagecoach from 1939 as an example. At the Oscar ceremony in April of 1970, he personally told Richard Burton that he felt Burton should have won the Oscar for his portrayal of King Henry VIII in Anne of the Thousand Days, a movie from 1969 too. The character of Rooster Cogburn was supposed to be around 40, but when John Wayne filmed this, he was 61. Henry Hathaway, the director, later said that he hated Glenn Campbell's performance, which he described as wooden. He claimed that the singer was only cast so that they could have the hit theme song that would go with it to promote the film. He also didn't like Kim Darby as the character of Maddie Ross. He felt that she didn't fit the role properly. The legendary Jay Silverhills of Long Ranger and Tonto fame has an uncredited part as one of the condemned men at the hanging. Now, I find it kind of funny that John Wayne and Henry Hathaway didn't think much of Kim Darby's abilities as an actress, but she didn't have anything but praise for John Wayne. She said that he was wonderful to work with. However, she did tell the producer, Hal B. Wallace, that she never wanted to work with the director Hathaway again. When John Wayne accepted his Academy Award for his performance, he stated that, wow, if I'd have known that, I'd have put the patch on 35 years earlier. The Rooster Cogman patch is worn over his left eye, the same eye over which John Wayne's longtime director and great friend, to whom he always referred to publicly, as Admiral John Ford wore his. The film's release date was Wednesday, June 11, 1969. That was 10 years to the day before John Wayne died. He died on Monday, June 11, 1979. Rest in peace, John Wayne. Thank you for the great characters that you gave us over the years. Thank you so much for watching and we'll keep chasing the classics.